is a natural process that occurs in nature every day. It's the process of taking items such as leaves, sticks, grass, and turning it into its basic natural form of compost. This is finished compost here. It's pretty much all the materials that go into making leaves and grass and trees broken down into their basic chemicals. In this format here, plants can take up these, these items as nutrition, which nourishes the plant and helps it grow. In gardening and in landscape, we use compost to help our plants grow better. And the reason we do that is because when we're planting things, and we harvest them, we're actually removing that nutrition from the soil. As a plant grows, it takes up carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, and a bunch of other different chemicals and nutrients from the ground. And then that, those items are put into the leaves and fruit and flowers of the plant. So when we harvest the plant, we're continually removing this stuff from the soil. And eventually the soil can become depleted of all these basic nutri nutrients. If we add finished compost back to the plants in the ground by mixing it into the ground regularly, we're returning these items to the ground and so that the ground can continue to be fertile. Compost can be made very simply in your own backyard by just setting up bins and adding material and turning it. So we're going to learn about how to do that today. So first let's talk about what kinds of items you can put in a compost bin. So in a compost pile in your backyard, you're going to be adding things that you get from your garden. Anything from weeds that you've pulled, uh, things that you've pruned off of your bushes, leaves that have fallen from the trees, grass clippings. Even you can add some fruits and vegetables from your, gar from your uh, kitchen when you're preparing a salad or some bread that's rotted or maybe something that's gone stale. And even pasta, if it doesn't have a lot of pasta sauce, you can throw all that material into a compost bin and turn it into compost. So when you're adding material into a bin, you want to be thinking about the balance of carbon and nitrogen that you put into your bin. Now, anything that you add into your compost pile, you can think of either being greens or browns. Now, greens are things that are really high in nitrogen, which is very important for all the organisms that are doing the decomposition in your compost bin. Now, greens include things like grass clippings, fresh leaves, anything that really is green, including like fruits and vegetable scraps, because that has a lot of nitrogen in it. And these items usually have a higher moisture content. On the other side, browns, that includes stuff like dried leaves, sticks, bark, and breads and cereals and stuff like that. They're drier and they have a lower concentration of nitrogen and more carbon pretty much. So when you're adding these things together in your pile, you want to layer it as much as you can so that these organisms can get the balanced diet that they need of the nitrogen and the carbon. There's no necessary mixture that you need of how much carbon versus how much nitrogen. Some references will tell you 50-50, some will tell you 70-30, some will tell you 60-40. It really is based on your own preference and how much maybe you have on hand. In the fall, it's kind of hard to get a hold of something green because everything is dried. In the spring, it's hard to get a hold of something brown because everything is green. Um, you pretty much can work with what you have. If you have a lot of green stuff and you don't have any carbon to throw in your pile, you can let stuff dry first before you throw it in your pile. That will remove a lot of the, um, the moisture from the leaves and it kind of turns it a little bit more brown so that your uh, compost pile can have its balanced diet. When you're adding things into the pile, size does matter. You can imagine uh, if you throw a big log into the pile, it's probably not going to break down as fast as a single leaf. Um, a good way to explain this is to think about a large block of ice versus a pile of ice chips. Now, the pile of ice chips is going to melt faster because there's more surface area involved than a big block of ice. Well, these organisms that are doing the composting, they're small and they can only work on the surface area of whatever they're eating. So if you want your compost to happen faster, break things up into small pieces. Now, you don't have to sit there and buy you know, an expensive shredder to shred all of your material before it goes into the pile. You can take um, just a big shovel and chop things up or a pair of hand pruners and make them small. They don't need to be minuscule, but it's better if you can chop up a stick from this size into this size, just so that it makes it easier for these things to eat. It'll also make it easier for you to turn your compost pile if things are smaller. That way when you get in there with a pitchfork to turn your pile over, you're working with smaller pieces instead of a big mass of sticks. The second thing to keep in mind when you're composting 
is the moisture. Now these are living organisms and all living organisms need moisture. They need water to live. Um, in a compost pile, what you're looking for is about a 40% moisture content. Now you don't need to have one of those fancy little moisture indicators in order to tell if your pile is moist enough. All you have to do is stick your hand in the pile and pull out a handful of, um, of the materials from your pile and squeeze it in your hand. When you squeeze it, if a lot of water runs out of your hand, you have too much water in there. Your pile needs to dry out. If you squeeze it and you look at your hand and it's completely dry and, the, and it just feels really dry to the touch, all the stuff, there's not enough water. What you're looking for is when you squeeze the stuff from your compost pile, you're looking for a couple drops of water on your hand and that's it. That tells you that you've got the perfect balance of moisture in your compost pile. Another important factor to keep in mind is air. These are living organisms and they do breathe air. What you have going on in a healthy compost pile is the process of aerobic composition. In other words, these things are using oxygen to compost. That process doesn't produce very much smell at all. If, on the other hand, you don't have enough oxygen in your pile, you're going to get anaerobic decomposition. That does smell very bad. So if you think about uh, a pile of just green grass clippings that have sat in the sun for a couple of days and you turn it over, it's going to smell pretty bad. I'm sure we all have smelled that kind of rancidy smell of something rotting. You don't want your compost pile to smell, so you need to turn it regularly. That's how you make sure that there's plenty of air in your pile. When you turn the pile, you can just move the material out of the pile and then put it back. Or you can do like we've done here and set up a series of bins so that you can just take the material from one bin and turn it over into the next bin. That way you can easily just turn your pile back and forth. The process of turning the pile is also very important because it gets the material that's on the top of the pile down to more in the center of the pile. I mean the stuff on the top here is not going to compost as fast as the stuff in the middle of the pile where more of the organisms are going to be eating the pile. Another thing that you might notice while you're composting is that your pile can get very hot. This is a good thing, it's not a bad thing. As these organisms are eating and decomposing the material in the pile, they're going to be producing metabolic heat. That's a natural process. Just like when we go for a run or a really fast walk, we heat up. These organisms are going to be producing a lot of heat. That's a good sign that the composting is happening very quickly in your pile. A pile can get anywhere from 120 to even 150 degrees on the interior when it's composting really quickly. That's a very good thing. Um, not only does it show that things are composting quickly, but that high temperature is also going to be killing any diseases, bacteria, bad bacteria, or even weed seeds that are in your pile. When you're adding stuff into your pile, you do want to be careful not to be getting any diseased plants in there because just in case your pile isn't hot enough, and it's not killing those diseases, when you spread the compost in your garden, the finished compost, you still could have those diseases in the compost and it can be spread to your plants. So maintaining a temperature of about 120 degrees for a couple days or 150 degrees for one day is really ideal to get the, all the diseases and the bad bacteria and the weed seeds destroyed in your compost pile. The minimum size for a pile really does need to be about three foot by three foot by three foot. And that's important so that the size of the pile can actually thermally protect all of the bacteria and stuff that's on the inside that's producing that metabolic heat. You're not going to get a really hot pile from something that's very small. In order to get that, that heat happening from all of the decomposition process, you need a larger pile. So the piles that we've made, we've tried to keep large but they've already broken down quite a bit, which means that the pile shrinks. You'll notice that with your compost pile. You may build a pile and it may be all the way to here and then in a couple days it shrinks way down to here. That's typical. That means that it's already started to decompose, material has settled, that's fine. If you're concerned about your pile not comp composting fast enough, you can keep adding more material on top of it. You can always add more material at any time to your compost pile. Just keep in mind that the stuff that you've added recently is not going to be done at the same time as the stuff that you've added several months ago. Which brings me to my next point. How long does it take a compost pile to produce compost? Well, even with the most sophisticated composting systems there are, it does take three months at least for the materials such as grass and sticks and leaves to turn into finished compost. That's because there's an awful lot of work that has to go on chemically for these animals in order to eat the stuff and turn it into the finished compost. If you're adding things regularly to your pile, maybe once a week, 
just keep in mind that when you're harvesting your finished compost, there are going to be some unfinished pieces in there. That's not a problem. You can just uh, so sift it out so that you can get the finished compost and then throw the leaves and sticks back into the pile. Harvesting your compost from your pile is fairly simple. The easiest way to do it is to turn the material out of the compost bin. As you're moving the material out of the compost bin, you'll notice that the finished compost will settle towards the bottom. It will look like dirt, but it's not dirt. It's darker and has a more spongy sort of a feel to it, and that's your finished compost. You can remove that stuff from the bottom of your bin and then replace the material back into the bin and let it continue to compost. If your compost pile doesn't seem to be having anything happening at all, if it's not heating up, it's not getting any smaller, nothing seems to be breaking down, take a look at what you're doing with your compost bin. There may be something missing that those organisms need in order to be eating and reproducing and composting. Maybe your pile's not wet enough, maybe it's really dry, or maybe it's too wet. You need to control the moisture in your pile in order to make sure that things actually compost. If it's too wet, Try adding some dry brown material to the pile and mixing it up a little bit by turning the pile so that you can kind of dry it out. If it's too dry, just add some water to your pile. If your pile smells bad, usually that means it's either too wet or you have too much of the green nitrogen material in there. Usually that's because people have thrown too many fruits and vegetables into their pile and they have rotted and they start to smell bad. If that's the case, just add more brown material to it and turn your pile again. One very important thing to keep in mind is if you're adding fruits and vegetables into your pile, make sure that you bury them deep inside the pile. If you leave tomatoes and apple peels and stuff like that on the top of your pile, you're gonna be attracting rodents into your compost pile. If you're looking for a way to compost that's completely rodent free, what you need to make sure that you do is turn your pile regularly and make sure that you've got enough nitrogen material in there to make the pile compost quickly and make sure that you have a lot of moisture in your pile. That way, the temperatures are gonna to be too high and the pile is gonna to be too moist. Rodents aren't gonna to wanna to be around there. If your pile is really dry and it's not hot, it's gonna be a nice spot for you know, rats and stuff to hang out because it's gonna be a nice environment for them. So to make sure that rats don't go around your bin, Make sure it's wet and make sure it's hot. I would never add more than a couple of cups of fruits and vegetables to your pile at any given time because no matter what you do to the pile, it's going to be too attractive for rodents to come and hang out and eat all that stuff. If you're looking for a better way to compost fr uh, fruits and vegetables and you have a lot of that stuff coming out of your kitchen on a regular basis, I would try worm composting. It's the most effective way to get rid of that stuff and compost it and then harvest the compost. It's completely rodent free and very simple to do. When you're adding fruits and vegetables to your compost bin, make sure that you don't leave them on the top of your bin. A situation like this is ideal for rodents to come and eat all these materials and live inside your compost bin. It'll also attract flies and it can start to smell really bad. So when you're adding fruits and vegetables or breads or even coffee bags, make sure that you bury it deep inside your pile so that the rodents can't get to it. This is a good example of a compost bin that's pretty much done with the whole composting process. In here you've got a mixture of stuff that hasn't quite decomposed as well as finished compost. Now, before you take this and spread it on your plants, you're going to want to dry it out and cure it first. This is already dried because it's pretty much already cured, but if it's not, it's good to lay it out in the sun for a few days so that the ultraviolet rays of the sun can kill any, vi any viruses or bacteria that might still be in the compost so that it's safe to spread on your plants. Also, when your compost is dry, it's easier to spread on your plants. If you find that there still are lots of sticks and leaves and half decomposed things in your compost, that's fine. You can sift it out and then throw this stuff back in the pile to continue. So that's it. Composting is really that simple. It can be done in your backyard. It takes at least three months to get any compost out of it, but once you get it going, it takes a very minimal amount of time to keep it going.